I created the show because I wanted to work on a show like this. And I figured it was easier to create one than to try to find another one that would hire me. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. The goal when we first started uh, Blue World was to dive all over the world. I mean, we wanted to go to the four corners of the earth, man. We wanted to see everything. And getting this all done and ending up with a TV show that we're very, very proud of is amazing. Everybody has this big, long bucket list for the show. It's like all the cool things we've heard about that we want to go see. And our stories are driven by what cool things do we want to go see more than anything else. The most dangerous things we do are, uh, you know, cave diving and going into enclosed environments. You have to really be on your game in order to uh, do that. You've got to make sure you take all your precautions and you've got to make sure you follow your crew and take care of them too. Blue World is engaging to the viewer and takes them on a virtual adventure. It is interactive as much as television can be in that you experience by diving from almost a first-person perspective, something underwater that you would never see on land. Many TV shows give you information, but they don't take you places. Blue World takes you places that you could never go otherwise. Which is totally awesome! I started the show as a pilot back in 2007, and we went on the internet. Thought, you know, back then, YouTube was kind of fresh, and we thought, we have this kind of cool idea, let's just make a web series. So we went down to Florida, stayed with my mother, dove in Ginny Springs, uh, didn't even go to any hotels. We totally, uh, <laughs> by hook and by crook, we put the show together. Right after that, there was a, you remember the writer's strike in Hollywood? So there was uh, this writer's strike and PCMagazine.com did an article on the 10 best shows to watch on the web during the writer's strike and they put us in the list. And we got a ton of traffic on our site and I got a phone call from a representative from a distributor for public television and they said, this show is awesome, why isn't it on TV? And I said, I don't, I don't know, we'd love to be on TV and that's how we ended up on TV. Our mission is to actually help educate people about things in the ocean and have them look at the world under the water as an adventure, something that's interesting, something they want to learn more about. We're trying to spark an interest so that people will start independently trying to learn more about things in the ocean to help, you know, protect it. Uh, what inspires me is the adventure of it all. I mean, I'm getting the opportunity to go all over the world, go scuba diving, and do it with my friends. I love the underwater world. I learned to dive in college, and I sort of combined my love of diving with uh, uh, an interest in photography that I had for a long time. I started doing underwater photography, and I eventually got into video just because it's a better way to communicate what I love with more people. And so over the years, I got into making films, and I eventually ended up at the Pinnacle working for National Geographic, and that was great. But um, I had this idea for a show that was built around the idea of an underwater adventure, almost like a, a crocodile hunter meets Jacques Cousteau. And it was kind of funny because I said to my wife one day, I was t telling her about the idea, and I said, you know, all we need is like a wacky, goofy, sort of knowledgeable scuba diver guy to be the host. And I said, well, you should do it. <laughs> You're goofy, right? So here we are. <laughs> we came up with this sort of idea where I'm this roving cinematographer guy. And it's pretty accurate to my life, you know what I mean? That is what I do. It's just that now every once in a while I look at the camera and say, what's going on? Every time you drop off that boat is an adventure. And if you feel comfortable scuba diving, if you feel comfortable in your skill set, you just drop off there, man, you have a great time. Every dive is an adventure. Everybody thinks that I have the greatest job because I get to go to all these great places. The reality is that I do spend three quarters of my time in a dark room editing. But the field work that we do is the most fun to me. Uh, we get to go all over the world. I mean, I've been to everywhere from Antarctica 
to Fiji, Australia, uh, I mean, everywhere in the Caribbean you can imagine, all over the United States, anywhere there's water. Uh, and anywhere we go, we find a story that's really cool that we didn't know about. The show does have its own look. There's no sit-down interviews. Everything is movement. Uh, it's a show and tell. It's uh, descriptive. Um, we, want, we want there to be action and movement throughout the entire show. And I think uh, while shooting it, we keep that in mind. And then in post-production, that's, that's, that's our, main, uh, our main goal. When I first started working with the show, it was cut in a very much more traditional BBC style. You know, a lot slower, here's the shot. You know, let's talk about it for a little while. And, you know, I, I joined and Jonathan sort of taught me that style of editing and I appreciated that. But I also saw a lot of opportunities for us to, you know, pick up the pacing a little bit, try some different things, you know, sort of update the feel of our graphics. So, you know, one of the things that I feel like I've brought to the table is, you know, sort of picking up the energy of the episodes that I've worked on. The show took on a much different look when Tim came aboard. And I think that has a lot to do with Tim's age, his youth. His, his creativity, he brings a different kind of ethos to it. Um, it's like an infusion of uh, young creative blood into the show uh, that, uh, that really helps, it really shows. He's really helped take the series to a new level in bringing some of the graphics uh, up a notch and um, adding a lot of other, you know, editing style to it. I also noticed that between um, having Jonathan and Tim there, they work well together in helping each other. There's a really good synergy between Tim and Jonathan. The nature of the show is that it's almost never scripted in advance. It's a nature show. Now, I might have an idea what I'm gonna see. I go into the shoot with a shot list sometimes. Occasionally I go into the shoot with a kind of partially written script and an outline, but you can't really script something that you have no idea what the animals are gonna do, right? Or if the wreck is gonna be interesting or whatever it is that you're, you're filming. So we try to be as prepared as we can. We try to write our stand-ups in advance and how they're gonna lead into and out of the script and things like that. Um, but it, we play it by ear. I mean, it's really sort of seat of your pants sort of shooting. We go out with, with an idea of what we need to shoot and we go and shoot it, but really, you know, since we're not a scripted show, we have no idea what's going to happen. You know, we could go out to film humpback whales and they might not show up. You know, or we could go out and, you know, we could go down to NASA and shoot people in the neutral buoyancy lab and realize that there's this whole aspect of the story that we never even imagined. What'll happen is, you know, you get down with a shot list and you shoot everything you have on the shot list that you can get. And the stuff that you can't get, eh, you didn't get. And then you always get some stuff you didn't think of, you know, just stuff that happened. So, you know, okay, you come back with all that footage and then, you know, you scratch your head and you start, in, you know, working on the story. And sometimes you went into it with an idea of the story and sometimes you didn't. And you, it's completely off the seat of the pants. Since we make this show entirely in-house, we can start with an idea. We can go and shoot it, and if something happens and it completely changes, well, we can just go with that, and it doesn't matter. I used to freak out, you know? I used to freak out about it. We'd go into the shoot, oh man, I don't know what the story's gonna be, I don't know what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna do, or what we're gonna find. And then after a while, when you get used to working that way, you're just like, eh, it'll all work out. I don't know, I think that this show has a different feel than a lot of other TV shows out there, because we're, we're such a small crew that, it doesn't get like watered down and changed by, you know, like a half a dozen different producers and executive producers. And I think that that sort of comes across when people watch it. We have the ability to have a creative control over what we do. And we're able to stay true to our mission in developing this and follow our passion in pursuing all of the stories and presenting them to people. The interesting thing about Blue World is we're a crew and we always work together as a team. So we all have our, we all have our certain um, uh, job responsibilities when we're underwater. This whole little team, they know the deal. They've done enough segments now that everybody knows what they have to do. They know what, what's going to happen. Underwater, we can't talk to each other, but I can read their minds and they can read mine. I mean, we, we all know, oh yeah, we're going to shoot that and you're going to get in the shot and then we're going to do a back shot. We're going to do the reverse shot. And we're gonna, you know, and it's, you get so good at doing it that it almost becomes a formula. But what keeps it from becoming formulaic and boring is the fact that it's always different animals, different place, different thing, and the story is always a little different. I mean, when you work with anyone for 12 years, right. 
I mean, I mean, I can tell what he's going to do before he does it. I can tell what he's going to complain about before he complains about it. Our typical crew for Blue World on location is four people. Okay, there's me, and I'm the host, and I'm the principal underwater cinematographer. There is a second underwater cinematographer whose job is to get shots of me interacting with the marine life. There is a topside cinematographer whose job is to shoot everything that happens above the water, getting in and out of the water, loading the boats, all of the story elements that go into getting where we're going and doing what we're doing. And then the fourth person is essentially a line producer, slash audio person, slash lighting person, slash gopher, slash whatever. And that's, that's our film crew. We're a very small operation. Okay, uh, say for example, uh, we have a giant bull shark coming in. Okay, Jonathan's gonna get up close to that bull shark. He's gonna stick his camera practically in the shark's mouth, okay? I, being the smarter one, I'm gonna stay back a little bit further from the bull shark, get a picture of Jonathan sticking his camera in the bull shark's mouth. And then if the bull shark should eat Jonathan, I've got the shot. And really, we'll, uh, we'll probably end up winning an Emmy. <laughs> I started as a still photographer. So, imagery, is bliss. I, I love beautiful photography, beautiful cinematography, and nothing blows my mind like just a gorgeously shot frame of whatever. It doesn't even have to be underwater. Um, I love the power of imagery, whether it's still photography or cinematography. So in the field, I am inspired always by trying to capture the most beautiful moments, the most wonderful composition of beautiful moments. But from a television point of view, I honestly feel that even more important than the imagery is the storytelling. And this is something that uh, I think a lot of films lack, especially nature films. We don't want to make segments that don't have a good storyline that carries the viewer along, finding out what happens. That is the most creative part of what we do. I think story is more important than anything else. Uh, it was something that I learned luckily when I was young by my mentor, Art Cohen, who is still working with us. And the creative process, the post-production process, to me is about the story, it's the writing and the writing to the strengths of the photography so that you can tell a story with beautiful images. The fact of the matter is that you can tell a good story with not the greatest imagery, but you can have the greatest imagery in the world and if there's no story, it's just boring. So it's really all, all about the story. The only thing that really scares me is a lack of animals. We go to so many shoots, we, we travel so far sometimes, and you've got your fingers crossed that the animals are going to be there because you can never count on anything when you're doing natural history filming at all, ever. I get really excited when we get into the post-production process and I find a cool way to tell the story. Because sometimes you come back from a shoot and the visuals are okay, but they don't blow your mind. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're good, but you're not thinking, oh, this thing's going to be like an IMAX. It's going to be so awesome visually. You come back, you're like, eh, you know, we shot the story. It's pretty good. But then when you find that, that angle and you get the story like just right and it really all clicks, then you're, then you're really proud of it. And you're like, yeah, we did something all right with that. You can drop us like paratroopers in a location. We can go in, uh, shoot it, get it all set, bring it back and they can have it uh, in post-production and in a rough edit probably within a week. Tim Gears has years and years of expertise as a cameraman um, and that he brings that knowledge of uh, broadcast to us uh, from the level of, of, you know, daily television broadcast experience. And in addition, he knows how to get in there, get the shot, get it right the first time. And so he really knows that on a natural history shoot, you really only get one chance to get the shot, but he can do it. We don't throw around really fancy terms, director of photography, you know, there's like, you know, six of us. We don't have a big thing about titles. Um, back before Tim started, I was also pretty much the only editor. So he started as an intern with us. We called him Intern Tim back in season three. And he was the first intern we had that came in here that knew more about computers than I did. Um, and he very quickly was teaching me as much as I was teaching him. So we hired him. When I started here, 
uh, I knew nothing. And, and Jonathan sort of took me under his wing and he showed me a lot about it. He showed me how to mix audio. He showed me how to color correct. He, he showed me a lot of the things about editing that I didn't understand before. Because, you know, I, I knew how to use an NLE, but I didn't really know a lot of the techniques that are used in, you know, professional television. So, uh, you know, working with him has been more of a learning opportunity than college was. I came out of college not knowing really how to edit. I mean, you, you learn certain things in college, but you don't learn actual experience in college. Jonathan, Jonathan's an extremely bright and talented guy. Uh, we get along really well. We have the same sense of humor. He is extremely driven, and he has, a, through, the, through our years of working together, he has really developed into a, 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 a world-class filmmaker. I enjoy working with him. It's fun. It's rewarding. He, uh, each shoot, he brings a little something extra to it. He brings a little different aspect, a little looking at it in a little different way, and I really enjoy that. It makes each shoot we go on uh, unique. Being part of Blue Worlds is really wonderful on so many levels. It's a very creative thing in that with a group of people who all work really well together on a common project, building something that's fascinating and interesting and is liked by people, that's really why you do it. I think having something to look at later that you've done, that you can hold in your hand, is very valuable. The most fun about working here is sort of the, the relaxed environment, you know? I don't feel like I'm going to an office every day. It's a home office, but it's still not like a stuffy cubicle place or, you know, a place where you don't know everybody's name. You know, the crew is so small that, you know, you really become tight with everybody. I see Blue World continuing as a series. There's still many more stories to tell that we haven't told. And I think one of the fascinating things about this is I don't actually know where it's going. We're all on this adventure together. And this is a leap of faith for this whole group. And if you had told me in 2008 that this show would still be on the air five and a half years later, I wouldn't have believed you. The greatest things that are ever made are made by people that are passionate about what they do. There is no feeling in the world like getting up in the morning and knowing that what you're going to do today as your job is what you love and you're not going to go sit in a cubicle and do something you hate just to pay the bills. And that, you only live your life once and this is it. You get one go around. Don't do something you don't like. Do something you love because you only get to do it once.